Maturity in this building. In 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 IT. In IT. In the main as a paper. So we wait there or just they're not here. Their campus is not here. And I just talk about five days. Minum dulu ah. This is gonna be one. Here, here, Okay, maybe we shall start. Yeah. Okay, so good afternoon, uh, all, Pabas, and Paikrat, and Bu Pero, and you guys. Uh, we meet again, yeah, uh, in this lecture, but without with different format and different place, yeah. So today we will have a guest lecture, uh, presented by Christy Amanda Veronica. This is already in front of you, go, uh, all. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe before we start the lecture, I will introduce herself first. Uh, she is. An architect now, yeah, mm -hmm. or in and also interior designer. Uh, actually, she is in the same class with me in when we study architecture, uh, class of 2006, Six. yeah, yeah. So, we and we in the same class, also with Paikrar, <laughs> Paikrar also, uh, yeah, a year uh, below us. Uh, and then after, yeah, if you see her brief uh, profile after you graduated you have some experience in practice yeah yeah but more interior design yeah? also architecture and also architecture yeah. and then uh you continue your study uh, in master degree in 2014 2015 2014 yeah. 15 he she got her master degree in interior architecture in the US. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So she uh, after that you continue your uh practice architectural practice yeah and also interior design and since 2016 uh, 17 yeah you publish <laughs> Yeah. So from 2017 she Establish her uh, consultant, Christy Veronica Architects. Yeah. So maybe for your introduction as well, I want to introduce them. They are uh, international track students. Yeah. Uh, class of 2023, only five students. So uh, basically, they are uh, accepted in ITB uh, through what do you call it? Yeah? Ujian Mandiri, yeah? Seleksi Mandiri. Yeah. But for international track, yeah. So only five of them are already accepted in architecture, and the rest still have to uh, struggling to get the seat in architecture. Yeah? Uh, and then only this subject, yeah, only this lecture, they have to use English, but for the other class, they might use. Uh, they can use Indonesian uh, bahasa, uh, so that's why why we use English because on for international track mm. they have to study abroad yeah uh, one semester in the third year maybe yeah I don't know between semester five or semester six 
So that's why we want to encourage them to practice use English. Yeah. Uh, that's why in this class, I need you to speak in English. Yeah, to to ask or discuss each of you. Yeah, must uh, give a question to her <laughs> after the presentation. So that's that you can practice your English. Yeah. Uh, maybe that from me, and then after this, you can uh, start your presentation. The stage is yours. Please start your presentation, and don't forget to prepare your question after the presentation. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the long <laughs> introduction. <laughs> That's very encouraging, and also this is my first time coming back to the campus. I'm actually quite feeling quite nervous when he contacted me to go into this class. Thank you, Fabas, also for joining this class and giving me support. <laughs> and yeah, nice to get to know all of you. I will try my best to share today's lecture about being an architect. And this would come from my own experience. So I will try to give my best and probably take notes. And later on, we will discuss. OK. Can go to the next slide. So architect, um, there must be a reason why you choose architect, right? So I want you to tell me later what you think of architect, but this will be like our topic today, even though architect is a very broad subject or study that can go to other disciplines also. So to be an architect, I already see some syllables, but... <clears throat> You do, uh, I think you already got the idea. I narrow it down to three steps, which one is education, where you are right now. And then two is internship and experience. And three is licensure or license. So first, education. So this is what we expect of like a student in architecture. This is me and my friends. And this photo was actually taken on this floor. This is me on my final uh, pieces. I was sitting over there, and this is what you would expect, right? Like professionalism and others. This is like the expectation and the reality of becoming architecture student. Um, how long are you guys in the program already? Two months. Oh, just two months. <laughs> two three months. Okay, <laughs> so probably you're not familiar yet with the reality. Go to the reality. Next slide. Next slide. <laughs> so this is the reality of like what you see. What you see is me putting on my photos. But the reality is that you might switch your pen with a spoon while studying architecture and not sleep. And this is me passing out on like a assignment. But all of this you can avoid if you do like a good time management. That's what I learned. And it doesn't have to be this way. But from my experience, I was those kind of students. <laughs> so I mean... It depends on you, but I think there's also like a lot of memes around like architecture students. If you look, scroll to Instagram and others that talk about less sleep, you don't get caffeine. That's kind of true, but I think all of that can be avoided if you really like know how to manage well and it goes later also. Welcome, two months. <laughs> okay, next. That's right. So this is also me downstairs, if you're familiar with this campus. And we do have this tradition before that when we have a birthday, they throw us to like the middle pond, but in the back. So I, I was also joining the Association of the Student Architecture. That's why we have the blue jackets. So I was pretty um, on with my social life also in the architecture. These are all my architecture student friends. And we can go to the next. And then these are like some of the assignments. I think this was your third year yeah. assignments. And this is using technology that was like most, more than a decade ago. <laughs> so nowadays, I think you can produce a better quality drawings. But these are samples of the assignments. Back then, this was, um, we have assignment of National Tea and Museum Gallery. So the left side is more of like a diagram Metric like approach of explaining how you change from like a site. You can see on the top how the ideas comes from T, and then I got inspiration from T Hills, and I want to bring the journey of 
when you go to the tea hills where you pick the tea leaves, the journey through that. And the way we explain is through visuals. So probably you want to expand more on how you communicate through like visuals and also others. And then next, these are like my final <laughs> thesis here. Yeah, final project, ITB. So almost the same, but this is, again, this is more than a decade ago technology. You can produce better. And drawings is one of the tools that we use. Actually, in the first year and second year, I use a lot of like hand sketch and we also use pen. I don't know if you're still using that. Yeah. yeah? Try to be good at that. <laughs> okay, can go to the next. So this is my life while at architecture school. Yeah. So are you in jazz too? Yeah. Um, oh, cool. Like, Hello. Singer. <laughs> oh, singer. Yeah. So I was pretty active outside the architecture school itself. I go around campus joining band and then also the Balinese Student Association. Pretty active with the other, from other department. And then this is the party of like the G night. So that's like my friends from architecture school. And I also hang out with Wu oh, Widi yes. and Pabas. Yeah. <laughs> So this is me and Pamas and we read it on my birthday. So what else? Sorry, yeah. yeah, me too, Pa. <laughs> yeah. So I think you can see that my life in architecture school is not just the professional first picture that I show you with the papers, but also I have life outside it, which is also like a social life with other people and also the professors. So you want to befriend your professors or lecturers. <laughs> like today, Fabas is here. <laughs> okay, we can get to the next one. So this is probably like what my take on that. It's like diversify your network while at school or anywhere. So it doesn't have to be here, but you want to hang out or like talk with people from other departments too. Probably think of interdisciplinary. I also apply this from my, the subject that I take in school. If you can like do like other class from like other departments, I did that. I studied, I took classes from the fashion and also exhibition design from the Seni Rupa department, art department. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you can still do that, but I did that. I take a yes, lot of classes. Yes, you can do it in the third year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you might want to enrich your experience so j don't just be in this one <laughs> compound like focus on it but also like expand but now you the uh, itb uh, itb has a new program you can take a uh, master degree in different mm -hmm. uh, program yeah for example you want to take interior design uh, but fast track in five years you can have like a bachelor degree in architecture and master degree in uh, interior design or maybe in civil or physics now it's possible to take uh, those different disciplinary in five years that will be a time and money saving <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is that's good reason. yeah okay let's go to the next so this is me graduation this the photo is taken downstairs and also Jenna Architecture 01. This one? Yeah. So the theme was, I don't know why they put zombies on my graduation day, but these are the juniors. The theme was that, so there's only three graduates at the time and all the younger architecture students, they dress up like a zombie thriller kind of theme. I mean, I feel special. So that's one of the fun thing of joining and like hanging out with the architecture students while I was at ITB or Bandung Institute of Technology. Yeah. Our first program on campus. Oh, first project. Yeah. Oh, first project. In the second year, right? Yeah, we have a theme called The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. I don't know what is that, but for me, it all looks the same. I don't I don't remember. But basically, after I graduate, I called my life the discovery phase because I don't know where I want to be or like what I want to do. So it's like a discovery, discovering what I want to do. So this stage goes to the second one, which is experience. 
back at the time, I already have some internships at like companies, but still graduation is something that's like, hmm, where do I go from here? So after I graduate, I actually work on small projects. If you see like there's the same window over there. So I was assigned like a small beauty clinic in Jakarta from my friend and I just take on the project. Back then I was just thrilled to get projects and I also got several projects, but I start from there. So even if you have opportunity now, you might want to take advantage of that. Even if it's just designing a bedroom, it will be a good exercise. Okay. So this is me and my friend from year 2007. We call it the pro bono project because uh, back then there was a priest family friend who needs a alpha mart or like a supermarket, like yeah. make a mini, mini mart for a church compound. So there he asked, can you design one for me? And I said, yeah, of course, because I don't have other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I did take on the project. And then he asked me, okay, when can you go to Ambon? And I said, uh, Romo, like I just graduated. I don't have money. I don't make money. <laughs> Even this is a, a volunteer project, right? So he got me in touch with the bishop to make a presentation. And then from, from that, when I went to the bishop office, that he have a photo with the former president. So I was like, oh, he's big. <laughs> and then... I did the presentation and he approved the design. So he said, okay, you can go and have a meeting with the local contractor in Ambon. And I was like, oh, okay, I should probably get my friend Bini because at the time we were hanging out a lot and we talk about design together. So I was like, we should go to Ambon. Yeah, mm -hmm. so here we are in Ambon. This is actually a landmark in Ambon, the Ambon Manise, and standing in front of the drawing that we did as like the foundation. And then... This is us eating a lot of durians, free durians, free steak, and like rujak and merging. I think it was three days. So from this project, I think it's next. This is a uh, 1980s house. So I feel like because I do a lot of those projects, probably it opens a path of blessings. So one of my friend suddenly Blackberry messaged me. Back then was Blackberry era. <laughs> so he texts me, um, do you know architecture? I said, of course. And then, do you know interior? Yes, those are my fields. I just said it out of like saying it, you know? I mean, I'm just like being confident about it. And then he said, good. I have a land or like a place that I need. I might need designing. Can you come on Thursday? And then I contacted my friend, Bini, again. So I said, back then we were working, but then we thought, Mm, I think we need to make a firm ourselves because we weren't really happy with the place that we were working at or like the pay. So we were like, we need something else. Okay, so we created the name. Back then it was like A Square because my name is Amanda and her name is Aryuni. So we just make like the A, you know, quadrat and then we just call it like A Square and make the logo and everything. And I said, what else do we need? Now we need clients. <laughs> and then suddenly my friend asked me about this. So we went to the place and he converted this into a cafe and bar restaurant. So I got assigned to create the facade, which is a, the architectural part of this building, and also the interior. The place is 700 meters square at Kamang in 2013. So that's Bini, my friend. And this is also my friend from architecture school who comes at the opening night. The place is called Beer Brother. It was open until early this year. So it stands already more than a decade, but they just demolished it to rebuild. But I was pretty surprised that um, it completed on 2012, I think. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we really, this is our playground. As a fresh graduate, I mean, my friend were pretty surprised. Like, oh, you get your build project. So you might want to look at any opportunities that you have and take advantage of that. Even if it's your aunt or your friends, anyone, take it as a practice. And so our project got covered in the magazine. And this is the cafe that you saw before. This is the same compound. It's like Beer Brother. So the girl in the red shirt on the right, is actually Roria, my friend from our friend from our class. 
So back then we were working on several projects and Roria contacted me through Twitter, I think. And then she asked me, uh, do you have any project I can cover? Oh, why? Because I'm working for a magazine right now. And my editor asked if I have a project to cover for the magazine. I never heard of the magazine before, but I thought magazine cover publication. Sounds good. So she asked me for several documentation, which is plans and then also the budget pictures and others to submit it to her editor in case it got selected. It would be the project of the month. So I really put the package of the information and then she contacted me and she said, okay, my editor agree. I will bring a photographer, which is that girl and me to cover the place. So this is the, the place. And that's the picture. If you see like the small house that we converted to this place. So this is me and Vini. We're so thrilled. We, and then when the magazine came out, I think our mom bought a lot of copies to share to our friends and families. They were so proud of us. So my saying is that you never know whose friend might open an opportunity for you to go somewhere to be published or others. So befriend everyone and anyone. Don't choose your friend. And also be open to opportunities. Just try it. In case it didn't get selected, what's the harm of it? That. Mm -hmm. So after that, I actually applied to master school but didn't get in. I always wanted to go to New York. And then Vini, we were kind of low on projects, the Explore Studio that we make. And then Vini said, can I work for my mom's friend? He owns a design and build studio. And I said, yeah, of course. Because we need to make money and also we need to find experiences. If we don't have projects, we don't really evolve, right? So she works there. And then I think about like three days mm -hmm. after she worked there, she said, they need another junior. Do you want to come for interview? And I said, yeah, of course. And then I interviewed there. And then I got the job right away. And I told them I want to go to master school. So I already told them about that. But they were okay with that. So I worked there as a junior designer. They they do interior design and also architecture, but they are also on a contractor. But most of my work, this is the first work that I did there. A lot of their work are workplace. So it would be like thousand meter of like workplace. We're designing the interiors. And one of it is the Ben Isheri headquarters, like the one in the renderings. So from this place, I learned a lot on how to design offices, like the interiors, but also they make architecture. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I apply for master school where I apply preparing for that, like learning English, preparing my letters, like recommendation letters, just recommendation letters from employer and also your professor. So, the previous year, I applied to another school in New York, but I didn't get accepted. I think it's because I was self-employed. So that's why I work here also, to gain experience and to get the letter from employee. Because some people look at like professional experience if you work somewhere. So that might be something that while you're a student, you want to take advantage of. Because people will take students to do intern and others easily in your status. So I got accepted to the grad school and I'm actually specializing in adaptive reuse. So I'm going to touch a little bit on adaptive reuse. Adaptive reuse is an architecture degree, interior architecture degree within an existing structure. So let's say there's an abandoned church. In Europe, there's a lot of abandoned church. And then because they don't use it anymore, the building is deteriorating. Yeah. And because of that, they need money. Some some of it, they convert it into bookstore. Have you ever heard of like this kind of places? Or let's say it's a structure of a rail or like a bridge that they don't use anymore and they change it into a park. Basically, they reuse a structure that has already existed or a building and they infuse new use or like new function into it. And yeah. probably they... In Indonesia, touch. it's like a block you know, oh, yeah. 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 something like that mm. one of the projects <laughs> like that 
So in grad school, I went to Rhode Island School of Design, but their program is a one-year program with a summer school in Denmark. So this is actually me in Denmark. And there, they make us do a lot of like sketching. So this is me after graduation and now after working, but I came back to sketching. So they asked us to have sketchbook everywhere and to really portray or like sketch what you see in others. So bachelor degree. Yeah, like bachelor degree. But I think in grad school, this is one of the Lego because Big was big at the time. Big being architect, if you can Google. So he was big on Lego. I tried to play with Lego. And also, this is a sample of how my process thinking through like sketches to create like a form to define spaces using like a one line that I merged. So more of like a design process. But if you look at like the first diagram before, <laughs> It's all like a process. So probably you want to study how to communicate when you're designing something through like that. And this kind of diagrams, I don't really do it much in undergrad. I don't know if they encourage it now, but that is something that you might want to put in your projects later when you've got your projects. And this is the model that I did for that thinking. So this is a sample of like model. So basically, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, but right. <laughs> probably like the idea behind this, it's actually like a summer school project making a Nordic market, food market. So that is an existing, the rectangle. And this is like an infused <laughs> structure that I defied as a divider, but also it comes in like a, comes from like a small space to too big. So that will be the interiors. So it would be like a giant sculpture from the outdoors and it becomes like an interior because as it goes inside, it goes to a table, bar table height. So it becomes like a bar, but it's all like one unity of line. So that is like one. But yeah, the concept is light and shadow and people can walk around. Mm, you just got class on light and shadow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not, not and class, yeah. you might want to try, I mean, back then I used camera, but now it's like phone camera is already good. I think whenever you take like a model, this I put in like a sun like too. You want to capture where it hits like the shadow and make your model look good because it's also like a study model. So probably practice how you take good pictures. I'm pretty sure kids nowadays know how to take good pictures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is me presenting that project in grad summer school program. And I think going to summer school program is really kind of a culture shock for me, meeting all these American kids <laughs> from like different ages. And also we were in Europe, so they're very excited. But also the professor is a mix of like American professor and also like Euro professor, which have like different opinions. So for me, trying to explain to them, it's kind of like scary too. And I'm actually just learning about adaptive reuse. So, yeah. So after summer school, I go to Providence. That's where I study, the name of the city. So Providence is almost like Bandung. So if there's New York, New York is Jakarta. And then Providence is the Bandung because it's three hours away <laughs> by car. And then Providence is also an hour away from Boston, where like Harvard and MRT, M MRT, MIT is. So that's also like my desk in grad school. It's almost the same vibe with my undergrad desk, right? With like a lot of like papers and computers. So and all of your design? Yeah, that's for one project. This is like my final project. So probably if you can see like I designed like, we were assigned to create a design within a fort. Do you know what a fort is? Like a benteng. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, more of like a benteng. And then I think my concept, this is, I took pictures, just trying to get inspirations and do like a lot of study of the architecture openings because it's a historical fort. And I create several models. That is my model for presentation then. But you can see there's a lot of stuff on my desk. I think being surrounded with that kind of stuff really stimulates your creativity. And I just like having my case in front of my eye.
Okay. Do you, does anyone know who this is? Even though I don't know. God. Can anyone guess? You don't know the guy? No. Architect. You don't. Pabas don't remember. Are you Pabas? Who? No. Who? I mean, you're two months in architecture. I'm, I don't mind. <laughs> you don't know. But I have Pabas. Are you? No, you don't know. Okay, so, so this is me and one of a lecturer in MIT. This is Renzo Piano. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so I get to take picture with architects. So while, while I was in school, as I said, Providence is an hour away from MIT. And in MIT, there is they they do a lot of lectures yeah. with all these architects that are free for the public. So I just go whatever I, I can. Like we usually get information about it. And Is so, it yeah, although I look bad. <laughs> My teeth kind of look big and others, but this is the only picture I have with Renzo Piano. So I'm making the most out of it. And also sometimes uh, in my city, I have, we, we are the same town as like the Brown University. Have you ever heard of Brown University? I forget if they have, I don't think they have architecture degree, but usually they have lectures also there that invites a lot of these big names. And I always try to make time for that. And also this is the fort that I was showing you before in my final project. The white thing on the bottom is snow. So yeah, those are snow. So this, why I put like context is that when I was in the U.S. studying in the U.S., coming from a tropical country and suddenly studying in this four season city, uh, country is a uh, different. They have snow, and then also when we make the wall, wow. when we make wall, we use bricks, and then there I don't understand why we have like studs, and then you have to put insulation and so forth. Mm -hmm. It's it's a totally different approach. And also, I remember my first year in master school, my my professor asked me when I was designing the place, where's the coat room? <laughs> is it the coat room? And I was like, what is a coat room? Coat room where you check in your coats. And I was like, we don't have that in Indonesia. <laughs> and then I was like, really? I never designed a coat room. And I thought, uh oh, this is a culture difference. It's not, I mean, I'm trying to invent, I never designed a coat room. But in the US, because they have the big jacket for like winter, right? So they always have a coat check room. And I think when I think of that, the difference with Indonesia is that we have musola. We're probably abroad, they don't apply that. Because here, when I, when I came back, uh, when I designed, where's the musala? Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> but actually, that's the place that they always ask. So it's like the opposite. And also with all this, like, different seasons. Basically, I have, like, a culture shock. But then also, it's like the metric system is different. Like the numbering. We use oh, meter, centimeter. But there, they use it, different also. Mm. And also in school, I feel like at first, I don't know why the professor keep on asking me. Like now you're listening to my lectures, right? You just keep silent. My program was nine students. So it's also the small class. And then my professor was like, any opinions, any thoughts, Christy? And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I was being shy. And then later on, I realized in the syllabus, it says participation 35% <laughs> for like your grade. And I'm like, oh, that's why everyone just keep on raising their hands and talk like, there's nothing to talk, you know? I was like, there's no content in your talking, but you just need to talk because you need to participate. So I was being asked to be more active and I tried to be more active like in the master's school after second week when I realized 35% oh, for my grade. <laughs> yeah, because usually in undergrad, when you listen to lectures, you just listen until it's finished. Or, I mean, we do that also, but at least on the question and answer session, you have to be proactive because if not, they will think, oh, you're not even listening. And I never skip a class because if you skip one, even one class, you're out. So even when I'm sick, I try to join the class. Mm. And they're very strict about like time and your output. And everyone is super ambitious. 
I know in undergrad people are ambitious, but I feel like uh, when I was studying in America, the ambitious level is just if you sleep, you'll not about like the sleeping too, but if you don't like work, you will get left okay. behind. Everyone is super on point. They want to get to the top. There's and also my school is consists of Americans, but there's a lot of Chinese and Korean people. There's no Singaporean, but Chinese people, they're the only kid in their family. So they want to be the best. So I'm Chinese too, but Chinese Indonesian. So <laughs> I'm pretty chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is my, finally I graduate again, right? So this is me on my graduation day. The certificate looks kind of different. I don't even know which one is the date, but I made it. I got my master's degree. <laughs> And so now, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, next. So after graduation, that's the big question again. What's next now? Right? The state picture is actually taken in New York, and I feel like it uh, goes along with the question. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I see this, I was like, oh, yeah, what's next in life in general? I miss you. Let's go back. <laughs> Let's go back. And so, yeah, we go to the next. Yeah, lanjut ya. Hmm. Which is another discovery phase. So <laughs> there is a lot of discovery. And then as it was spoiled before. Yeah, NYC. Jadi gak seru ya. You already know, but it's okay. So I went to the Big Apple because it was always a dream for me. When Before I go to America, I actually look at other places to go to study masters. I look at Italy, Europe, UK. But I always, growing up, I watch American TV and also I sit in Pak Bas Koro's class and I know Pak Bas go, went to New York for behavioral design, right, Pak? And then I was thinking of taking that subject too, but somehow life deters me to Providence first. <laughs> yeah. And so I apply and got a job in New York. And this is the first project that I did in New York, working for this interior design company that specialized in hospitality. So hospitality consists of bar, hotel, and restaurants. If you're into like pretty things, that might be something that you can look Two, yeah, because you're gonna live bougie and like luxury lifestyle. <laughs> All the girls, are like, Ooh. yeah. So this is um, but also if you want to join all of this, you have to be super update and also pretty with your drawings and all your skills. These drawings, everything, I made it. So you have to be able to produce this work. Um, was done in one week. So the layout and everything, yeah. Because if you want to compete in the Big Apple especially, everyone comes to New York to have their resume filled, right? And also to compete. In, everyone, when they talk about New York, well, it's like a dream. So everyone comes, it's like a giant pot, but then you compete for everything. There is a saying also that in New York, it's hard to find a job. It's hard to find an apartment and a boyfriend. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But you're you're undergrad. Don't find boyfriend yet. Okay. <laughs> school. <laughs> yeah. So this is also one of the projects which made uh it's called Ben and Jack's Steakhouse. I was designing a steakhouse and this is me uh trying to get measurement at the site. So, so I was doing that. And we can go to the next project, which is a Montag Yacht Club. So it's a yacht club. I went to there. I forgot where it is. I think it's not Long Island, but the expensive part of apa ya, Pak? the the one near New York where the rich people live. No, Upper West Side is in Manhattan. This is you have to drive. But basically, uh, it's a club for the boats, like the yacht. Yeah. So it looks kind of like fancy with the model in the middle. So that's like my first. Uh, workplace in New York and then I was an interior designer but I don't really I feel like after working there I want to be called an architect I want to touch on like bigger projects because everything is interiors so I got another project uh, another place to work you can go to the next and also this is kind of my life working in NYC some 
And the picture on the left side is actually me attending Architecture Leaks program, just like a talk. So there are a lot of architecture associations and in in America, it's called American AIA, American Institute of Architects. And they have these programs, which is the Architecture League, and they create all this talk each month. And again, I try to be active since like also the people who's going to show there are people from around the world. So that is an advantage. And it's very inspiring to hear what other people say. I usually look at the subject also. Okay, what is next? This is sample of like working drawings in New York. So each of um, place, like for example, Indonesia and other places, they have different approach and also standards, right? And then one of the thing working in New York, when I was working there, one of the big thing that I kind of have to start learn is the codes, construction codes and ADA compliant. Construction codes is more of the type of lamp or fire rating system. So, for example, in Indonesia, when I first got, like, especially in hospitality, if you use fabric or any materials, it has to pass a certain fire rating. So, I was surprised when I came from, from Indonesia, I was eating at a restaurant and they have the layang layang, like the kite that was shaped like a bird on the ceiling. In America, I don't think you can do that unless those things pass the fire rating rate. And also occupancy, if you make like a building, if they put 100, you have to design it and actually put how many people can be in the place. And ADA compliant. The second company that I work, he have a lot of buildings that was already there in New York. So it's an old building. But then with the codes, you have to make it a disability compliant for like the wheelchair so a lot of the work resolved around that. Universal mm. design. Yeah. Okay. So this is what difference working in New York and here. It's the same measuring everything, but the measurement systems are different. In America, it's fit inches. And then when you drive, it's not kilometer, but miles. Uh, yeah. I don't know how, when I was driving in 1.2 miles, turn left. And I'm like, what, where? Because <laughs> I, I, I cannot count like what is like 1.2. I'm not familiar yet. But since I use it every day, like let's say like the space between tables is like 18 inches or others, I get used to it. And yeah, it's actually pretty simple. Now I just think of it as let's say one meter is three feet about. So when they, they put numbers, I just convert. That's what I did at first when I reached America and working or like in school. I convert from, okay, this is how many meters, centimeter? Because you might, where are they going after this? Are you, go, are you going anyone to? going to the, there are other countries that use this units. But I think when you are challenged with the different unit, unit system, you should not convert it. Because I did conversion, but then I get confused. So just try to speak their language. It's like learning new language. So let's say before I used to think, okay, 18 inches. What is it in meters? But then later on, I just like, okay, 18 inches. Okay, 24 is for this. So you want to learn that. Go to the next. So this is me as a job captain at this architect company. That's my colleague. Um, yeah, it was fun working. We were measuring a brownstone in, I think this is Upper West Side. Pretty fancy. <laughs> From American printing house. But in the basement, there's also a lot of asbestos. So a lot of the drawings actually resolve around the safety of the buildings also. It's more a lot of like, if they want to put like um, roof and the compliance to the updated code for use. This is my boss and that's my work area. It's a cubicle and that's my mom and dad. My boss is a 70 year old architect. So my friend, it's a small office, but it's located next to Madison Square Garden. Yeah, so every time, the first company that I work, it was located on Fifth Avenue. And I feel like I'm in the New York kind of movie situation. Because I can say, oh, I work on Fifth Avenue and then working next to Madison Square Garden. And yeah, his window is actually looking there. 
but he was really nice and I work in like a cubicle kind of setting in the open space era. <laughs> so that's my boss and he's I just say happy birthday in 2022. He turns already 80 something, but he was so fun. I would work there again. <laughs> we would go to New York. I actually visited him when I went back. But I learned a lot about that. So this is the one that I said. In Indonesia, you might probably look at it as like Ikatan Architect Indonesia or others. In New York, I joined the Architecture League of New York, which gave me access to go to all their events. This is the events that I showed before. And that's like, and yeah. And this is my life in New York. So the purple thing is actually an architecture event. So that's also from the Architecture League. And on the right side is when I work for my, the first company, we get to go to the Platinum Design Award. So Platinum Design Award is an award given to interior or people in the hospitality industry. And I remember that year, the founder of Aman Resort, he got an award. And he's from Indonesia, from Sukabumi, the original founder of Aman Resorts, like the yes, fancy yes. Aman. Yeah. Yes. Now it's being sold to other yes. company, but yeah. And I like it because it, I get to dress up fancy in the <laughs> event. And I always try to dress up everywhere and that work. Except you. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's my that's colleague. The, the one life. in like kind of batik dress. The white one. Yeah. You change, you become... New Yorker. <laughs> New Yorker. With my fancy drink. Yeah. And my... Your, 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 your design? Which one? No. No. Yeah. Also... I like to yeah. take. Yeah. I took a lot of classes. I told you. <laughs> I go to fashion class and also exhibition classes. <laughs> yeah. Work as interior. <laughs> so even if I go to the office, I still take part in the social setting and architecture also. So the one is also, we can go to the next. The picture is actually with big itself. So you reckon that's me. I'm trying to like see how close. And I tried to take selfie, but it was even worse than the one with Renzo Piano. So I didn't put it here. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I get to meet a lot of people. Also, I met Sam Smith, but Sam Smith is not an architect, so I didn't put it here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Sam Smith. And then the one who sang the no, Borat also sang Happy Birthday younger, to me. The younger kid, the pop kid, the John Camila. No, Camila. Yeah, it was uh, Sean Mendes. Oh, Mendes. Yeah, so they're more excited about all these actors. <laughs> they're more excited about that, but. Make use of like your Hollywood star and also the architects <laughs> and also go to their lectures. Can get to the next. And this is also Andrew Aravena. He just got a Pritzker Prize. That's the one in the one that I showed you before the lecture. I mean, some of this lecture can be super boring, but most of the lectures of them, none of them are boring. And also in it, they have this first Friday thing. So each month there will be an office that have an open house. Mm -hmm. And then you can network with people. Some of us were okay, but you get to get free drinks and food. So I go like a church thing every month. So your main motivation is to get the free food. <laughs> to get free food and to network. Not network, but free food and free drink. And on the left side is actually BDNY. It's a trade place. So more like in Indonesia, like a just a sec. Like if you, you have like exhibition, like the Indobil Tech and others, before, I don't like going to those places. But then after working and uh, others, I found that those places are actually helpful because talking to vendors, it enrich your knowledge in materiality and how you design. And I think you can get... I feel like if I go there in my undergrad, I will get A all the time because now I can talk about materials and how to apply it to my projects. I would like to say to them, please have now the... Uh, your favorite architect. So you take take picture with the architect. Like okay, you know, yeah. Yeah. He has so many pictures with famous architects. Please, you take picture with Mr. Ajis, famous architect. Yeah, <laughs> take picture with us. <laughs> yeah, I took picture with Pabas. See, that was from like twelve years ago. Hmm. But we did too, but we really missed it. Yeah, we really didn't yeah. see. She was on the presentation. You should, you should know now. Or are your 
favorite architects and find your role. Find your role. Find your role. I mean, reading was one of the big thing that they do, right? Like, um, I think here I only hear, who is your favorite architect? I just say my lectures, like Papa. <laughs> what about like the one about Zahadi? I just say it out of like I don't really follow their work. But when I was in master school, I actually found someone that I really like. Her name is Maya Lin, but um, she doesn't do a lot of architecture projects. But there's this one particular project I watch it through documentary. So sometimes if you don't find it through others, you can probably just randomly pop into a documentary or find a cool project that you like and just see if it inspires you. Because I don't think you can put like, oh, you have to like this one or that one. You'll find it later on. So this is my message. She's like, be proactive. Like from grad school and others, I wish I applied this from undergrad. I mean, I was active. As you can see, I joined everything. But I wasn't really proactive in class in undergrad. Um, I was active, but I think it was, a, it was a different culture back then. But you are in international class. So I feel it would be like a different, and you have to go abroad later. So you want to start to put that in mind because people abroad are very active. Yeah, they're very, they, they are very good at presentation and others. So you might want to just like, so yeah, I'll just like say anything, even though there's nothing in what I'm saying. <laughs> Practice, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And always deliver complete, complete and right on time. This applies to everything that I do, even up until now. Because now like I do a lot of tenders and also doing competition and others. You have to have a certain standard of what the output. And if you miss even like one second, you will be disqualified. And you want to start practicing now. They don't know yet what to complete. <laughs> Can if they give you like a certain asking, right? Like let's say you have to create this A, B, C. That's the very minimum. If you can over deliver, but if you cannot, at least deliver complete. That's that would be like the minimum. Because we did a competition also. I think two years ago I did a competition with uh, some friends, and then. On one of the requirements, they asked for a budget. We didn't put this one down. And I'm pretty sure if we have this one in to the submission, we have a pretty good chance of at least being like the top three or others. But because you missed this one, sometimes they look at the completion first and then they look at the content. So it cannot pay for like what you're lacking. So after America Life, I come back to Indonesia. <laughs> this is where I work in Jakarta, Pak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I started this. Because when I came back, I was like, you know what? I already work here and there. And then I want to have my own control of what I design. Because as a designer, you might have your own style and ego. We call it like a designer ego. Is from it true, Pak? From here on, I know already. <laughs> oh, what's up, Pak? <laughs> you don't know everything, Pak. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Not I yet. like mystery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i started crazy veronica arts sex just me and my friend told me uh, even my friends they all reach out to me do you want to work in singapore do you want to work here because at that time i already have a pretty good connection but then i said no i don't want to work in here or there and then i just decided i'll make a logo and this time i really start to make this so i started it and Okay, go to the next. This is my first project in Indonesia. So this is an apartment. No, oh, it's it looks kind of similar to our, our friend's, friend's house. house. Really? Yeah. Is your friend my client? <laughs> <laughs> Where? In in Jurupur. Oh no, this is in a Kuningan. Oh. It's an apartment actually. So oh, wow. yeah. 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 We want to know the drawing looks like. How is the drawing look like? Okay. This is so pretty. Yes, yes. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like it's from yeah, it's New York. So actually, this is my only project. That year. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I created Christopher Nick Architect. I don't have a project yet. And then uh, my friend recommend me to her mother. So she said, mom, you like Kardashian? 
I have a friend who likes Kardashian. I think she can get your style. <laughs> so yeah, that's how it started. I said, really? Your daughter say that? Okay. So because she thinks that I like the Kardashian, you're familiar with the Kardashians, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I kind of like them. And then she said, probably because you like the same thing, she can understand your taste. So that's when I go to the house. And then she, she when I first arrived, she just said, I want everything white, clean, no gold. Uh, okay, classic. Uh, okay, how classic. And then from then on, I worked on this project for quite long. And we actually put the Baccarat uh, lamp there in the renderings. And she wanted that lamp. But What's because, the yeah, on the oh. left side is the rendering. Okay. I yeah. thought it's the real one. No, this is the real one when we're installing a different lamp. That looks too real. This is, again, technology from more than five years ago. So you can create better now. Is there a sketch? Oh, yeah. Is there a sketch? Yeah. Uh, I think that's oh, I didn't put sketch. I can pull it up later. <laughs> in the, well, I guess I was just playing with um, proportion of like the panels. Because all the panels here, it looks built. But actually, the previous one is all wood. So she really wanted to change the vibe into white. I'll, I'll pull it up later. But... Also, so it's this dining room and living room is about 90 meters square. So it's quite big. And I do a lot of decorations, actually. I go with the client to select each knickknacks that goes in with the space. Yeah. Oh, next. And this is another verse workplace project. It's yeah. Transusa. Anyone familiar with Transusa? Yeah, it's actually the Transusa Aviation the airplane, airplane. Yeah. now back then this is their logo if you like to travel domestically huh? no it's a kakatua i think <laughs> <laughs> but they changed the logo now because now they're a commercial flight so you can actually book them to this is in 2019 so back then <laughs> They don't, they're not for commercial. They're just by charter, like a private charter plane that goes around like Timor area, like East Indonesia, Flores and others. But you can like book them privately, but now they're domestically. So, uh, um, so this is, I get to design their headquarters, which located near my house. So it's a convenient. So that is one of my big projects uh, after that one year of only designing the living and dining. I get to, but it was fun because it's a luxury project. I get to go and buy a lot of pieces and actually get more information about where to buy stuff and how to buy expensive stuff or like choose. <laughs> and I really like my client because my client trusts me. And I think it's important that your opinion get appreciated. But to reach that level, you have to enrich yourself also with the knowledge. Can you go to the next? This is the transosa that I designed. But they didn't design it this way. Oh. Yeah. So my friend over here, Ikra, is the contractor that I tag along. Like I said, they are giving me this project. I give it to him for the construction. And also my cousin, she have a workshop for interior furniture. furniture so I give the other for them and the budget back then was 4 billion rupiah but they slashed it down to 1.3 <laughs> or I think the last budget was like around two something and so one of them said like oh like the interior I was expecting more and I said yeah your boss just cut this, the budget because this is 4 billion and then with the budget we have to take out everything so the office is not like this, the one that was built. But at this, I present the design. <laughs> the design was good. Okay, I can get to the neck. Yeah, so back, back to the, the back. The previous. Go back. Right, light and shadow again. Oh. <laughs> is he the lecture of the class? Lecture. I think there is a book on light and shadow that also goes probably. I don't know. Yeah, it means that learn. it's quite important in design. 
<laughs> yeah, because if there's no light, then there's no architecture. You don't get the space vibe, I think. But in this is more like interior work. Yeah. So recognizing the need is the primary condition for design. Anyone knows Charles Ames? <laughs> it's a designer. You can search for designer and architect. So basically, when you're designing, the need is the primary condition for design. Unless you were asked to, I, I guess like everything have a need, right? Even if you make like a, um, what, like a booth, there is a need. So you want to see what is the main that they're asking for. And if you can, later on in your journey in architecture school, you want to focus on like what is the main thing that might be a break or like it can be your core for inspiration. So build your life. Actually, now uh, I'm working also as a contractor. So besides interior design, I started Chrissy Veronica Architects in 2018. And then after, those are for architecture interior design projects. And then the Transusa, my friend here, helped me with the contractor. And in pandemic time, I asked him, can I help with the contractor? So I became a contractor. And starting then, I also built the furnishing business, which is to make a built custom built cabinets. So that's me in the workshop explaining to our woodworker on how to the details of the woodworking. And on the right side is me talking to the building management about the space behind me that a client was assigning for a design project, design and build project. So when this is in UOB Plaza, Jakarta. Anyone from Jakarta? Everyone except what? Where are you from? Yeah. Bandung. Bandung. Are you familiar with UOB Plaza? UOB is, is near, near. Bundaran HI. Yes, yeah. the, the Kuningan Kuwait. Route. Yes, the Kuningan and go straight next to Bundaran HI. Oh, it's not Kuningan, it's Sukiyama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, so it's, it's there and it's a big building. It's at Plaza Galeon and because it's a building and then the location is next to the, it's in front in the lobby. So we have a lot of requirements by the building management as a designer to comply with a lot of tasks and also as a builder. So back then I was designing a mezzanine in the space, but then we have to talk to the structural engineer of the building because any additional would be a stressor for the structure. So that's me having a meeting with my documents with the building management. Let me go to next. Can, can you play the video? This is the project, like the one behind me. The videos also, and I like to see progress. And actually, it's to watch our worksmen whether they're working or not. And we have a very like strict um, rules about no cigarettes on site yes. or near. Yeah. Yes. So one cigarette, you're out like that. And for safety also, because one time I was looking at the video just out of randomness out of my phone, and I was like, why is he standing without a safety gear? Mm -hmm. So those are like what I experience as a builder also. As a designer, when we go to site, try to wear a helmet also, even if you go to like construction site, because it's really a thing. Even in New York, when I was working, uh, sometimes the wind, they can, there's a lot of uh, problems that the, the glass just fell and others. So let's say like in New York, whenever I go to work, I try to stay <laughs> near the, a building and like under like a certain up, like a, a cover. Yeah. But whenever you go to site, even as students and others, just try to have like a safety helmet. Next. Now, this is the project. So whenever you go through like, you know that one? Where? That's our project. Besides Grand Indonesia. Yeah, it's the UOB. The BMW. True. Blum, blum. <laughs> go back, go back. Oh, no. <laughs> She's a spoiler. Why you reckon it? I want to ask. I like it every day. Why you go there? Uh, me and 
Nelly school is oh. in Al Azhar yeah, Pusat and our school. And it's oh, like okay. just one road, the same road. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, and also I use Transjakarta every day. So yeah. I go almost every day. When did I, you recognize this? Because this was finished 2022. Not, not the building, the BMW. The BMW. Um, yeah, I wanted to buy a bike from there. Because that's why <laughs> <laughs> I always look at who's buying, who's buying. Like, that's our joke. We're like looking at the... But yeah, so it's located there. That's what I said. That's why there's a lot of regulation. Yeah. For this project, I would say it's an interior, not architecture, but semi, like you have to to be really precise of what you're presenting because it's behind a glass. So the idea is to have those two bright blue strikes from the Transjakarta. I haven't made a documentation from far. That's like my goal, but I don't have the time yet. I'm trying to find uh, someone who can document this project from Transjakarta, you know, like from the... That would be cool. I, I have never been to the Jakarta myself to see how it looks. But every time I pass, I always say, like, that's the project. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. And also, I got this project, actually, from this girl that I met randomly, just, like, hanging out. And she's just graduated from, like, a school. And she recommended me to her friend who recommended me to her boss. Again, uh-huh. that's what I say. Like, with your network, you I mean, you can pick your network, but you never know where you might get your next project. Like, who would have thought that that one hangout in 2019 with this small kid, just like hanging out for, I don't know, probably two hours, drinking, eating snacks at the cafe in Menteng, can go to a project at Bundaran Hai. Mm. Like that. Bundaran Hai. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying, I don't know, every time I say it, it's just like automatically like the MRT. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The last stop for now. <laughs> Next. So this is also a project that we did. We designed the architecture in America that actually was located in Chijantung, Jakarta. <laughs> so this is American farmhouse. And this is a photo. This one is not a rendering. So this is a project that we... I actually photoshopped the plants because it wasn't green yet, but it's actually an actual photo with the cover of the car. You can't tell it's real. <laughs> but we designed this house from zero. We, we designed and built it. And the concept is that. So some of the our projects right now are residential and also like workplace. Commercial, not so much. I actually miss designing hotel bar and restaurants and I'm waiting for that big break like a big coming project. If you know anyone who wants that, you can recommend me and I can <laughs> have you as my interns. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we can go to the next one. This is an ongoing project that we are doing right now. So this is a five-story building with a basement located in Chideng near Tanah Abang. And it is, a, right now we can Google it. The existing is Clinic Utama Gracia. But we are going, this is the design. We are still, the design is done, but we are in budgeting phase. Oh. Have you, are you guys familiar with, with the architect's kind of like um, steps yeah. of designing? Not yet. Okay. So basically, this is what they call preliminary. Have you given them assignment? Are they going to get <laughs> bad grades? Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> no. no. But basically in design, like they have, you have concept. Yeah. And then you have preliminary, where preliminary yes. comes like in this form. Sometimes it's in rendering, but usually you already have an idea of how we're gonna look, it's going to look. So we are done on this, and we're now on document stage. And also we need to do budgeting also, because we are a contractor. And now, since we already know the budget is kind of not there because the facade is expensive, mm-hmm. we might have to alter this. And actually, in this project, I collaborate also with a friend from my year, Desire. Oh. Yeah. So I always like to collaborate with other friends, like people. doesn't have to be from your architecture school. It's even better if you can collaborate in like later on. There's a lot. There will be a lot of events. I used to join a lot of collaborations on exhibitions or other also with the UNPA University if they have a lecture or usually you can get it from professors that's why I put PAMAS and UED because sometimes it's the connection from there 
like if there's a professor coming and visit, you can, if they seem cool, you can like, hey, can I help? <laughs> like that. You can get to the next one. This is what we're designing. This is the same space that we're doing right now. Hopefully it will be done in less than half a year. There's going to be still a clinic or? What? No, it was an abandoned clinic. When we first oh. go there, for survey, I actually found needles on the floor. Oh. I'm like, oh. It's a logistic company, oh, it's a headquarters. So I feel like throughout my career, when I first working at the design and build company, they do a lot of workplace. And now I'm doing workplace again. And it's in the span of like almost 10 years. So I don't know, there's a correlation between that. But it's going to be a logistic company. This. I didn't put everything, but I can show you later. I can go to the next. So this is our expectation of like architects. I'm a meme girl, even though like I don't vibe with the new one. Yeah, sheesh. <laughs> but, but basically, are you familiar with How I Met My Mother? Yes. Yes. Oh, he's a culture <laughs> kid. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't familiar back then. I don't really like. Him, but it's okay <laughs> because he he seems like he's not great at what he does but what I want to enhance from this is you really see as like what I really do because I feel like this one resonates even from my era what I really do aligning toilets so there is a joke that when you go to internship you're gonna left with like designing bathrooms or wall partition and we take it's like well why are you designing a bathroom but actually and I feel like I did design the bathroom when I first worked. Work. And I was like, why am I designing bathroom? I want to design other place. But bathroom is actually very complex. So you want to, I think why they give you that assignment is because the location of like the each fixtures and where to put and the dimension. Because sometimes when we are in the building business too, right? the builder, as a contractor, even that gap between the tissue holder and the placement. Yeah, have you been to like a bathroom that's not yeah. good? Yeah. I just went to this fancy, huh? <laughs> I just went to this like fancy apartment and then the bathroom toilet holder is here or here. And I said, oh, I swear like this probably, I don't know how to use it. Like the tissue holder, like something like that. So what I was gonna say is like, don't be discouraged if you're asked to do like small things. Because you might have like, why am I designing this? I want to start big. You don't know, want to like do like a big ones. But actually, those are the skills that you want to master at first. And, and we'll we get the toilet assignment next year. Yeah. yeah. Probably we can do a yeah. toilet exercise now. <laughs> <laughs> we can get to the next one. So this is the reality of like architects. Like you already built Mona Lisa.